Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. I'm here at Wikibon headquarters. Fusion IO is on the move again. The company just announced that it's buying NextGen, a hybrid flash array company. We've been talking a lot at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE about the impact of flash. We had a big flash cube this week. For, for the last 15 years, function has been moving out of the host, out to the array. This, I'm talking about function like you know sharing and, and, and snapshots and replication and data migration, all this storage function that companies have made billions of dollars selling. Fusion IO is coming at it from the other end of the spectrum. They started at the server. That's smart because function's moving back. What Fusion IO is doing is they're essentially developing a platform and it's making a lot of the function that has moved out into the array less relevant. Fusion IO is coming at this from the server, moving out into the storage hierarchy, and with me to talk about that is David Floyer. Uh, David Floyer is coming to us from the West Coast. Uh, good morning, David. Good morning, Dave. Yeah, so this is a pretty interesting announcement. Fusion IO has been been making some some moves. Uh, we saw they recently uh, acquired ID7, and now NextGen. First of all, tell us about NextGen. Where do they fit? Uh, NextGen are a hybrid storage company. Uh, they use. Uh, so, uh, the use Fusion IO storage cards, the PCIe cards, and they have aimed clearly, clearly at the hybrid market. Uh, they have uh, a different, three different sets of models: the, the, the high end going up to uh, 100 to 300,000 IOPS, and the low end around the 50 IOPS. So, uh, uh, very suitable for IOP uh, heavy workloads uh, that uh, small organizations have. Uh, but pr uh, but combining for a small organization that only wants one or, or two devices, uh, combining flash uh, for the performance side and storage for the uh, lower cost side. So now uh, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, ID7 acquisition, how that fits in, and really what are, what are my real question here is what is Fusion IO trying to do? Help us squint through that. Well, they they bought ID7, which has all of the uh, open source code and, and intellectual property around the stack. So that's pro pro uh, uh, providing the Linux kernel, and almost every vendor now is using Linux uh, as, the, as a starting point. So it's uh, providing the drivers, providing the code in Linux for uh, the uh, for the for the new type of of uh, IO. Let me stop. Let me stop you there. Let me make sure I get this right. So Fusion IO's game, their main game, is to really extend memory with a persistent flash medium uh, at, at very high speeds, a little lower cost than memory, but persistent and much much faster than spinning disk. And what you're saying is that ID7 and Fusion IO are essentially helping to improve the Linux code, the Linux kernel, and the entire stack to make it more friendly for this type of architecture. Did I, did I get that right? Is that correct? That's correct. And with the uh, acquisition of NextGen, they will add all of the uh, code um, uh, as well to that, which is uh, the code that traditionally was provided by the storage vendors. So it's the snapshots, the uh, uh, remote replication, uh, yeah, synchronous replication, uh, the all the uh, thin provisioning, etc. All of those sort of uh, all of those sort of capabilities will be essentially open source, uh, and just take out all of that, make it uh, make them own that stack, and completely disrupt the whole of the array industry in the long run because. The amount of money that will be there uh, available um, will be very little. They'll be integrators as opposed to innovators in in that area. You're saying they, being the traditional storage array Correct. business, yes. will be integrators rather than so. Fusion IO is innovating. Uh, let's talk a little bit. Let's let's double click on this. Fusion IO is the only company uh, with, with the capability through software to do what we talk about as atomic writes, the ability to write directly to that flash and bypassing not only the spinning disk, but bypassing disk protocols, which are very chatty and very uh, uh, overhead intensive and, and, and not good for performance. So that's, first of all, that's a, that's a correct statement, right? That Fusion IO is the but, only one shipping but, that today. That's correct. Now, and, and that's required for very low latency. 
Um, so what Fusion IO are extending their reach into the from the very low latency also into the low latency uh, and providing that stack of functionality in uh, on a Linux base uh, as as part of the uh, ecosystem and uh, and if they provide soup to nuts uh, all of that capability and provide that platform that's their, their that's their goal that's what they're trying to establish so when you say platform you're talking about an end to end platform from 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 server all the way out through uh, the the network to be able to share these devices across clusters is that is that right uh, it, it, that will that uh, assuming that they establish the initial platform for the low latency and very low latency, of course, that's where they are going, uh, the, uh, the, the, the final resting point. So that's a long-term direction. Uh, that's a long-term direction. That's, that's, that's quite a few years off. So, but Fusion IO is attacking the hyperscale market. Obviously, Facebook and Apple are its two big customers. The stock was down last quarter, uh, and, 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 and revenues are, are still under pressure because those two big companies have have slowed down their buying. This is a typical pattern for Fusion IO, uh, but the stock's up today on this announcement, and I think it, it largely because Fusion IO is dramatically expanding its total available market. David, isn't it? That's right, and it, it, it uh, talked about uh, uh, the number of new customers that it's had uh, in the government in, in different areas, uh, above five million, and, and a whole raft of them above a million. So it's trying to extend its uh, customer base away from just the uh, whales in the area and being the platform that the newly emerging cloud service providers are going to use, uh, the new storage stack. This is the one that they're going to use going after that market, skating to the park of where new innovation is happening from the ISVs. It'll be in these cloud service providers and uh, um, providing the platform, which is an ecosystem on which they can then uh, develop uh, additional products. Okay, but the hyperscale market today is, is I mean, it's, it's growing very fast, but it's still relative to the overall market, it's still small, right? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a niche if you talk about, you know, the, the yep. size of the, you know, the server and storage business. I mean, the hyperscale market is, accounts for what? 10%, less than 10%? Oh, uh, yeah, if you include the Googles and the, uh, uh, and the Microsofts, uh, and, and not all of that's available, it's probably uh, around that 10, 15 percent. But it's growing substantially lar larger than, uh, or faster than the overall marketplace. Will the hyperscale trends, that notion of scale out uh, and high degrees of automation, the, the, the market that Fusion IO is going after, will that trickle into the enterprise, in your opinion? Well, it'll trickle in in two ways. Uh, it'll trickle in because all the innovation is likely to, the ISVs, uh, the new ISVs, will start life as a cloud provider. And they're putting their bet that that will happen fairly quickly. That is happening now, uh, that that's where the innovation is going into the marketplace. And we've, we've seen that ourselves in you know, Salesforce.com or ServiceNow or examples like that where uh, the, 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 the root of new, new applications and new ideas has come from those cloud providers. They're taking the bet, and I, I agree with them, that that's where a lot of the ISV market is going, and that will move uh, processing from inside IT to the cloud. And then, uh, uh, that being the main thrust there, they will establish uh, their platform as their ecosystem, as what cloud providers, and then eventually, of course, uh, they those ISVs will produce uh, packages based on that on that technology for for uh, enterprises, and it's likely that they will produce the package and produce uh, and, and and have a reference architecture for it. Okay, so the SMB. Uh, gets access to this technology through the cloud service providers, in your view, not directly? Yes, or the SMB, they will eventually get through that. Um, but, but like everything else, it's going to be very much a mixed market for a long time. And uh, if they can own that part of it, they think the, the pendulum is swinging towards that, and that's where the puck is. Excellent. All right, David Floyer, thanks very much for stopping by and uh, cluing us in on this, uh, this big announcement from Fusion IO. Fusion IO expanding its total available market, acquiring 
hybrid flash vendor next gen for 119 million dollars. David Floyd, I really appreciate your uh, your quick response here and uh, good talking to you. Good talking to you. Have a great day. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll be back next time with uh, more breaking analysis here from Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. Appreciate you watching.